On the last video, we talked about several things that throughout the history of the Earth had led to speciation events or changes in the species that have lived in our planet. Continental drift, climate changes, disasters have all caused speciation among organisms because it's forced animals to either cope with those changes or to go extinct. Sometimes these changes happen way too fast for animals to adapt, and then we get what it's called a mass extinction. Now, a mass extinction is basically a, ca a catastrophic event at the global proportions that leads to end of many, many species, especially the species which are at the top of the food web because their numbers are smaller. So the apex predators or secondary or tertiary consumers are usually the first ones to go extinct because their numbers are smaller. And usually it's the producers that tend to be the ones that, that have at least a few that survive because their numbers are more numerous. Uh, also, the smaller animals tend to be the ones that survive usually mass extinctions because they didn't need to eat as much. The, the, the biomass is smaller than the, those of larger organisms. But mass extinctions in general have repeatedly throughout the history of the Earth erased many of the species that live in those periods. Now, what that actually creates is what we call a global succession event. Remember, we learned about succession, which is what happens when ecosystems are destroyed. And little by little, life actually returns and recovers. Because normally, you don't get completely wiped out of life, but maybe seeds are left behind. Maybe, you know, you have a little bit of soil left behind. And so life can restart from those things and little by little go from, you know, the primitive community to climax communities again. This happens at a global scale every time you have a mass extinction that raises animals all over the world. Um, the also thing, thing, the other thing that happens sometimes during mass extinctions is the end of big promises. For example, before the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, you have animals such as the Velociraptor, which uh, scientists think that were very, very smart and that perhaps could have evolved to become a very advanced race over long periods of time. But they never got a chance to do so because they went extinct before they, they actually got that far. So likewise, right now, we may be arguably living in a great mass extinction. And even though we don't realize, animals are going extinct at a very accelerated rates. And the big promise of humanity and everything that we could become, we may not be able to become because we may go extinct before we actually get that far. So mass extinctions are usually the end of these promising life forms, which could have perhaps gotten further if they didn't actually got, got extinct. And another thing that mass extinctions will do is they will clear up niches. So they will clearly reduce the biodiversity of the world because many organisms will go away. For example, the Great Permian mass extinction erased almost 90% of all the life on Earth. So clearly, it reduced the biodiversity tremendously. But then, from the ashes of the extinction of all of these organisms, now you have all these roles which are available because the organisms that used to fulfill those roles, that used to live in those niches, are not there anymore. So new organisms can evolve to, to assume those niches, and that means that you're going to have new kinds of life coming up. Just like, you know, before the dinosaurs used to govern the world and used to be the, the kings of the hill, but after they went extinct, mammals could evolve to take up the niches of top-level carnivores and all the other places on the ecosystem that the dinosaurs used to take up. And so you could argue that the destruction of the dinosaurs was good for the mammals. So is mass extinction a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's definitely bad for the life that existed prior to the mass extinction. It's bad to the biodiversity that existed before. But then it creates new kinds of biodiversity. Just like succession is sometimes important in certain ecosystems to maintain that ecosystem alive over long periods of time. Because you need to recycle life. Okay. So what the mass extinctions do is that it erases the old life and gives opportunity for new life to come by. So yes, in fact, if you look at the biodiversity levels of the Earth, biodiversity has been increasing throughout time, even though several mass extinctions have took, taken place. And remember, of course, the mass extinctions will completely ab obliterate food webs, and at the top of the food web are going to be the ones that are going to suffer the most, and will be the first ones to go extinct. Now, throughout the history of the Earth, there have been several mass extinctions. And they were caused by several different things. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I have a lecture series that talks about that in my Earth-Based Science lecture series. And there's also a project that you can do for extra credit in my biology class that talks about the history of the Earth. So in this project, you learn about what causes mass extinctions. But there's a mass extinction that happened right before the Silurian period, another one that happened at the end of the Devonian period, another one that happened at the end of the Permian period, and then another one that happened uh, at the end of the... A Mes Mesozoic at the end of Cretaceous, and then another one more recently that's arguably happening right now. So these mass extinctions that have happened throughout the history of the Earth have 
constantly cause decreases on the diversity of, of life. Notice, for example, how you know the numbers of species or number of people that used to live or families that used to live uh, actually crashed throughout the history of the Earth. By the way, the greatest increase in diversity ever of the history of the Earth occurred during the end of the Cambrian period. It's called the Cambrian Explosion, leading to the Ordovician. You can see that on the left side of this graph up here. And you see how uh, the greatest number of kingdoms and families and orders evolved during the, that period. Since then, you've seen a lot of crashes in diversity, like on the mass extinctions that we talked about. You see them here, all marked in the graphs. But, and you see the recovery after that, but not so much in different orders of life, more so new diversity within the orders that already existed. You know, the, after that, the second greatest increase in diversity happened during the Mesozoic, where the dinosaurs increased in diversity tremendously. But not so much in different kinds of life, more so in, you know, uh, the diversity in, um, within the same orders that already existed. Although, during the, the, the Mesozoic, uh, flowering plants evolved, and that led to a great explosion in diversity in the plant kingdom. And likewise, mammals will evolve during that period too, and a great, cause a great diversity increase in the animal kingdom. And uh, the great extinction that erased the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous also decreased the biodiversity, but since then, the diversity has also increased, increased tremendously. And the overall pattern of diversity, as you see, is that increasing diversity ever since the Permian mass extinction that occurred at the end of the Permian age, which was the worst mass extinction ever. Look at the dip that happened there on the Permian mass extinction over here. A tremendous mass extinction that erased almost all of the life on Earth. It came pretty close to the, to the life actually being completely eradicated in the planet. Um, but since then, there's been an overall increase in diversity. And the world has never been as diverse as it is today. But it's also never experienced extinction rates as big as it has happened today. Because the current rate of extinction is the highest rate of extinction ever. Because of deforestation, habitat destruction, over-exploitation, pollution, and other human activity, which causes things like global warming and all of the other things, the current extinction rates rival even the extinctions that have happened during the Permian period, where animals went extinct in the order of hundreds of species every year. Now, actually, the rates of extinction are close to thousands of species every year. As the human population grows exponentially still, but lower, lower and lower because uh, the, our numbers are getting to the point that the habitats can no longer withstand, we're getting to the point that the fluctuations of temperature of the world, the changes that we're seeing in the world are causing extinction rates that are terrible. You see on the top left graph how the numbers of freshwater species, marine species, and terrestrial species are crashing faster than ever before. And this will lead to what we call the sixth great extinction that's actually happening right now. And this extinction will is be, probably be worse than the permanent extinction if it doesn't stop very soon. And because the rates of the extinction right now are worse than the worst extinction that ever happened in the natural history of the world. And this one is caused by the worst natural disaster ever. The Permian mass extinction was probably caused by, you know, volcanic eruptions and disease and meteor strikes, but more, probably mostly because of volcanic, massive volcanic eruptions that cover the, the sky and cause a reduction in productivity because the plants could not get any sunlight. But since then, you know, uh, different things have happened. You know, another one, the dinosaurs, the Triassic and the, and the Cretaceous experiences were both caused by meteor strikes and spread of diseases. But the current mass extinction is caused by the worst disaster ever, caused by human habitat destruction. We are the worst natural disaster to ever walk the face of the planet. We are destroying the world faster than any other th event has ever destroyed it. And at the rate they're going, the diversity of the world will crash so fast that the top of the food web will also suffer, just like in previous mass extinctions. Now, the interesting thing is that we are the top of the food web, so we are most likely the ones which will not survive at the end of this whole story. So that's some food for thought. So that's mass extinctions. And remember, they're tied in with evolution because they clear up niches. They end up the big promises. They provide uh, the uh, opportunity for new species to actually take place of old species. And, but they do completely eradicate the food web and they cause global succession events where usually the apex or the top of the food web are the ones that don't survive. So if we don't want to be extinct and you know, we don't want to be just another piece of natural history, we should consider what we're doing to the world and how we can be worse than the worst natural disasters that have ever occurred. All right.
I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll talk about some other topics in evolution.